Hello and welcome to the session solving a linear problem using OpenSolver. OpenSolver is a linear solver engine which can be added as a plugin to MS Excel and it is similar to the solver plugin which is already available in Excel. But unlike the solver plugin, OpenSolver plugin and OpenSolver modules are completely open source and free to use. So in this session, we will take a solver case study about a manufacturing company manufacturing specialized lighting products. And as you can see in the screen, there is a question for that. And we will see how we can solve this particular question using OpenSolver. So the question specifies that XYZ Limited is a manufacturer of specialized lighting goods and they have received orders from four different customers, customer A, B, C, and D, for units 3,250, 780, 4,355, and 2,190 of a specific model of their lighting solution. XYZ Limited has two warehouses. The first warehouse has a stock of 6,000 units of the specialized lighting product and warehouse 2 has a stock of 5,000 units. To ship the customers from each of the warehouses, the per unit cost differs and it is given in the table. That is, for example, customer A incurs about 1.30 euros per unit of the lighting product shipped from the warehouse 1. And similarly, the rest is given in the table. So our goal is to calculate how to distribute the items so that the order quantities are met and the net shipping cost for each of the customer is minimal. So based on the data which is given in this particular question, you create a table and you can see that we have the total inventory available. Warehouse 1 has 6,000 units and Warehouse 2 has 5,000 units. Then the customer require, requirements are actually given below, like this. Customer A requires 3,250 units. Customer B requires 780 units. Customer C requires 4,355 units. And customer D requires 2,190 units. And to the table to the right side, you can see that from Warehouse 1, how much units should be sent to each of the customers, what is the corresponding shipping cost per unit. And similarly, you have the warehouse two details as well. So to calculate the total shipping cost, we create a net shipping cost here in euros, which is actually E5, which is the number of units from warehouse one into the shipping cost, shipping per unit cost. Similarly, I have included the uh, shipping cost, net shipping cost uh, equations for all of the customers for warehouse one and warehouse two. And we also have to have a check of the total number of units sent from warehouse one as it cannot exceed the total available inventory. So what I've done is sum of create an equation in Excel creating a sum of E5 to E8, which adds all the respective cells and creates the total number of units sent. Similarly, we calculate the same in the warehouse two as well for the sum. Now what we have to do is also monitor the total amount of units sent to customers A, B, C, and D. And the total amount of units sent to customers should be matched with the customer requirement. Like for example, customer A, the total number of units to be sent should be 3250. It cannot be 3249 or it cannot be 3251 or any other number so that the orders are met. So once the total orders are met, the total shipping cost also can be calculated. So here the total shipping cost is calculated as sum of G5 to G8 which is the total shipping cost of warehouse one and L5 to L8, which is the total shipping cost of warehouse two. And we add it together to get the total shipping cost. 
Please note that all the equations are actually connected, cross-connected. For a linear solver to work, it should not have independent data set and it should always be connected. So once you have the data laid out in a presentable format and easy to calculate and calculated all of this, what we can do is we can go to the data tab of the Excel and towards the right side, you will have the Open Solver plugin already installed. If you haven't installed, I have also added in my YouTube channel how to install the Open Solver. Please go ahead and give it a look. It's a very simple process and you can easily add in these plugins. So once you have that, what we have to do is create a model so that we can calculate how many units from warehouse one to customer A, customer B, customer C and customer D can be sent. And similarly, customer A, B, C and D from warehouse two as well. So to that, for that purpose, we create the model. And this open solver model, we have three main cells. One is the objective cell. That is the target to be met. Here, our shipping cost should be minimal. And the variable cells, variable cells represent the cells value, which can be changed by the solver to actually get the objective and also the constraint cell. So what are the limitations and assumptions that we have? That is, uh, that is to be added inside the constraints cell. So here, our objective is to make the sh total shipping cost to the minimal point so we click on the total shipping cost which mind you is uh, sum of all the shipping costs and it's uh, based on equations it's not something that we calculate separately and type it in it, to solver for the solver to work every cell should be cross-referenced and connected so we have the object cell and we have we have the maximize and minimize target values so we create we click on the minimize so that it's minimal if you have a target value you can also click on that particular target value and do the equation as well so we have minimize to, uh, to make the total shipping cost minimal and now we have to select the variable cells here so the variable cells here will be the units ship shipped to the customers that is customer a through d from warehouse one as well as warehouse two so click on the variable cells and inside your sheet click on the corresponding cells i'm selecting e5 to e8 and along with that i also have to select j5 to j8 so i click on j5 to j8 and that should add the variable cells here now what we have to do is to get the constraints so constraints are simple factors because warehouse one has only 6000 units the total number of units shipped from warehouse one should not be above 6000 and total number of units sent from warehouse two should not be above 5000 units so we'll add those first so the total number of units shipped from warehouse one should be less than or equal to the total number of inventory available in warehouse one so you press an add constraint that constraint gets added similarly we have to add the constraint of warehouse 2 as well so i click on cell so warehouse 2 total number of units sent from warehouse 2 should be less than or equal to total inventory available in warehouse 2. you add the constraint and also we have to meet the customer demand that is the total number of units units purchase order created by the customer should be met that is the total order shipped to the customer that is the customer a should be 3250 so we can add that requirement as well so the total number of units here which is calculated as sum should be equal to it's not less than or equal to it should be equal to the customer requirement a similarly we can also add in the customer requirement of B customer requirement of C and the customer requirement of D now that we have added all the constraints we also have to take into factor that we cannot ship a fraction of the lighting product so we only can uh, ship 
one single product we cannot ship half the product or one half the product so that is also a constraint so to add that constraint we can add in the units sent from warehouse one should be an integer value so that there is no fraction similarly the unit sent to customer b from warehouse one should be int similarly the rest of the customer c should also be added and customer d should also be added that is completing the warehouse one now we have to add in the warehouse two details so where from warehouse two you add in the constraint integer value for customer b as well customer c also should have the integer value and customer d should also have the integer value so once you have that you have added the objective cell the variable cells and all the constraints that are required so since this is a linear equation the solver engine to be selected should be a linear solver here in open solver you have coin or cbc linear solver by default if you want to change it you have a variety of solver engines there you can select anything but for our purpose here in the linear solver we will stick with the cbc or the linear solver so once we have this we can save the model and this saves the model and if you want to see the model you can click on show or height model upon clicking that you will get to know the entire model of uh, the data that we have created that is we have warehouse one it should 6000 so total number of you know items sent from warehouse one should be less than or equal to 6000 and from warehouse 2 should be less than or equal to 5000 and its all relations are mapped to this particular table so these are for cross checking purposes in case you encounter any error or you miss out any variables you can always see the model and you know resolve from there i'll hide the model for now and what we can actually do right now is to solve and to get the data values here like how many units from custom warehouse one warehouse two warehouse three even if there is any other value like for example we are adding 65 units here when we are going to solve the equation this will be overwritten by the value calculated by the solver so i'm going to push on solver and one click on solver you can see how it solves the linear equation so the customer a will get 2605 units from warehouse one and 645 units from warehouse two and similarly customer b 780 all the 780 orders are met from warehouse one customer d has 2190 units which is all the orders from customer d as well so you'll get to know all the data here it's like from which higher which warehouse each of the customer should be sent the orders for and you also get the total shipping cost incurred which in this case is 18,060.25 euros hope you enjoyed this uh, session on the linear solver using open solver and uh, i'll make sure that i'll put in the description the files required for it and i will also add in some exercise question for you guys if there is any doubt you can always comment on this and uh, you can always comment on the blog link as well where you will get the resources the workshop examples and the rest of the thing so if you like this video please like subscribe and share with everyone you have and everyone you think that uh, will add value and so that the knowledge always stays free and open and thank you for supporting our channel see you next time bye